Hey everyone, and welcome back to Cruising with Matthew. In this video, I'll give you a tour of our superior balcony cabin on board Fred Olsen's Balmoral, which I was lucky enough to stay in during a four-night press trip in September 2022. So, I really hope you enjoy this video. Before I start, I want to highlight today's sponsor, which is my kind of cruise. They are the world's first and only mobile app where you can search, compare and book a cruise across a range of cruise lines, including Fred Olsen. I've actually booked with them for my April 2023 cruise on board the fabulous P&O Britannia, and I was super impressed with their high standards of customer service and good prices. If you want to check them out yourselves, then click on the link in the description below. Now, on with the video. So, for our press trip, we were lucky enough to be allocated a BA grade superior balcony cabin on deck 9 of Balmoral, cabin number 9071. Without further ado, let's take a look around. Walking into this cabin, you'll first encounter a small hallway area which features a number of wardrobes. I really liked the use of the mirrors here, giving the illusion that the hallway was wider than it actually was. Opening the wardrobes up, there's a good amount of hanging space and a set of small drawers. There's also a safe to store any valuables during your cruise. The second wardrobe features much of the same, but also those all-important tea and coffee making facilities. Both of these wardrobes were a good size, so I imagine you'll have no issues finding space to hang up all your clothes during your cruise. Adjacent is the bathroom, which is well kitted out with a good amount of storage space. The sink area was a good size, with some drawers situated underneath. Nearby, there's also a hairdryer which is fixed to the wall, although Yeyan did say that it wasn't all that powerful. Next to the towel rail area, there are yet more shelves, so there are plenty of places to put your toiletries in this bathroom. I really appreciated the fact that this bathroom had a shower as well as a bath. However, with it being such a short cruise, I didn't get chance to use the bath, so that was a shame, but one of those things. Stepping out into the bedroom area of the cabin, there are two good sized single beds which appear to be fixed and weren't able to be converted into a double bed due to the fact that the bedside table was fixed into the floor. This was a shame as we do like having a double bed together, but it did mean that there was no chance of Yeyan stealing the covers like he always does at home, so I wasn't complaining all that much. We both found the beds really comfortable and slept well throughout the duration of our cruise. Now, the combined bedside table offered lots of drawer space as well as a telephone on top should you need to make any calls. Opposite the sleeping area is a large dressing table. Here, you'll find lots of surface space to store all your bits and bobs as well as yet more drawers offering further storage space. There's also a good passenger information booklet, so for new cruisers especially, I imagine this will be quite useful. This area also houses the cabin's mini fridge, which did a good job at keeping our gifted champagne cool, so thanks to Fred Olsen for that. Do note that Balmora's plugs are mainly the European two-pin plugs, but they do offer adapters for free for the duration of your cruise if you go to guest services. Plus, when we arrived into the cabin, there was already one there. This cabin also featured a good-sized television, although, to be honest, we were too busy to ever have time to use it. There's also a small table and chair, which was a nice addition to the cabin. However, the best feature of this entire cabin has to be the balcony area. I just love the addition of these side windows at either side of the balcony door, giving this area an almost bay window design. As a result, it created a little alcove, so even if it was a little chilly out, I could still sit at the table and get some great views out to see. The balcony itself is equally as impressive, due to the fact that the cabin was situated at a part of the ship where the structure goes inward slightly. As a result, we got a balcony that was slightly larger than usual and gave us a wider field of view than if your cabin was pointing straight out. 
Although there was an overhang from the deck above, it meant that there was little to no chance of us being overlooked and help shelter us from the rain, so it didn't bother us all that much. It gave me and Yeyan so many opportunities to watch our transit through the River Seine as we sailed from Rouen and then back down to Honfleur. Stepping out onto the balcony with a coffee in hand as the French countryside rolls past our cabin is something I will never forget. As you can probably tell, I absolutely loved our cabin on board Balmoral. The angled balcony was a massive plus point for me, and overall I would happily stay in this cabin again. Given the large amounts of storage space in this cabin, it would be perfectly suited for one of Balmoral's longer cruises as well. So there you have it, my tour of our superior balcony cabin on board Fred Olsen's Balmoral. I really hope you've enjoyed it and it's given you an idea as to what you can expect in this wonderful grade of cabin. A massive thanks to Fred Olsen for gifting me and Yeyan this incredible cruise and thanks to My Kind of Cruise for sponsoring this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe because it's always appreciated. If you want to know more about Cruising with Matthew, then take a look at my other social media sites, the links are in the description below. I hope that you're all doing well at the moment, and I can't wait to see you in my next video. So until next time, this is Cruising with Matthew, and thank you so much for watching.